<clears throat> Jai Baba. Nothing is real but God. Nothing matters but love for God. God is the only reality. All else that seems real is illusory. God and I are one. Meher Baba. Autar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you to beloved Baba and Jai Baba to all of you. We are reading this beautiful book called The Conversations with the Awakener. We are on page number 34 and Awakener. flowing conversations with the Awakener. We are on page number 34 and the chapter is The Prisoner. And today, one of the prisoner, prisoners have been set free from all the aches and pains. I am referring to Nan Umriger, whom we all know, or most of us know. She had been instrumental in bringing too many thousands, I would say, of Baba lovers in the fold of Autar Meher Baba through her occult aspect of what we call as auto writing. By saying that we are not endorsing or we are not propagating that particular art, but I personally feel that she was blessed and gifted to bring people to Baba's fold and which she did most beautifully. Uh, Nan, Soumya and I have been very, very close to Nan. We got the information very early in the morning. She was hale and hearty. She had her evening walk and evening uh, sort of, you know, a meeting get together outside her home. And in the morning, she was feeling a little uncomfortable and all of a sudden she collapsed uh, at around 4.30, 4.40 in the morning. It was very sudden. And in a sense, I think very few blessed people would go off or pop off like that. And so we are reading the chapter called The Prisoner. So we are all are prisoners of our own samskaras and karmas. And the moment the samskaras get over, they are extinguished, they are experienced, they are utilized. We just free ourselves from the prison, sometimes to bind ourselves into another prison. And so as not to bind ourselves into another prison, we need to remember Baba's name constantly. <clears throat> We hope and pray that Baba welcomes the soul of our very dear Nan in, her, in his loving arms. And we also hope and pray that she gets eternal peace. So in honor of her joining her beloved Lord and Master Meher Baba, and also Carl and the other members of our family, we will just observe a few moments silence, not as a condolence, but as an honor to have her in our life and as a participant, as a participant in her joy of meeting the Lord. Just a moment silence. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. May Baba take her in his loving arms forever and ever. Jai Baba. Thank you for being with us. Another event, which I don't know whether I should be saying or not, but I'm saying all the same. This I got to know that 68 years back, Baba had visited a family called the Shastri's house. And their Shastri's, they were none other than the uncles of our dear uh, Ram brothers. and Nori brothers. Okay, Ram Nori and Merchant Nori. So it's a very important occasion for their family. You can imagine, you can imagine God visiting our home and blessing our home and embracing each and every member of the family. I am told that uh, uh, our dear friend Mer the Merchant was in the womb. And so even before he was born, Am I right, Merchant Ji? He, he got the blessings Merchant of Mer Mer Merchant Garuji 
All right. So having said that, I think we'll start with our reading. That yes, mayor has something to say. Please say. Mayor Daruwala, go ahead. Cyrus Uncle, uh, sorry to interrupt. On uh, Saturday, if you can tell about the center, how the center birthday is also on the same day as uh, this thing, Baba's birthday. Center's birthday on the same day? No. Yeah, 25th of February. Oh, you, that, 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 there's a separate chip. I'll be saying it not on Saturday, but I'll be saying it on Friday evening. Okay, okay. Friday evening, I have a session where I'll be talking about the center. Okay, thank you. Thank and, you, Sarasan. Thank, thank you. you. And, and it also reminds me for those uh, who are in, into, into the Parsi ceremonies, there is an Uthamna ceremony tomorrow. For those who are Parsis, they will understand. At the Sahir Agyari, at 3.45 in the afternoon. So whosoever for wants, Nani. for Nani, of course, for Nani. Yes, sorry, for Nani. So whosoever wants to pay their respects and go there, they are welcome to go there. Parsis. Okay, yeah. No, even the Pars non parsis will not be allowed inside the Agyari, so there's no point in going. But if somebody wants to just go, nobody can stop them to sit outside in the compound that way. All right, so now we start the prisoner, page number 34. Under the blue dome of the sky, on a green lawn that stretched far and wide, we were quietly sitting together, far away from the crowds. You looked so relaxed. Every part of your body seemed to be perfectly at ease and in harmony with your whole form. Your every movement, being spontaneous, was graceful. As you beheld the surroundings, I marveled at how you appeared to be seeing yourself in your creation and how each thing in turn seemed to be looking back at you as your reflection. The peace that prevailed was so deep that even my thoughts and feelings were drowned in it. I just continued to gaze at you with wonder and admiration, savoring these lucid and precious moments with you. You smiled your love into my eyes. Most unexpectedly, you opened the conversation by asking, what do you do for a living? I was a bit startled and replied, don't you know? Yes, I know not only this, but much more, you said. However, I want an answer from you. I am a painter, I replied, looking pleased, you asked, fine. But are you really a painter? Yes, I exclaimed in surprise. In addition to my artwork, I also paint houses, offices, and restaurants. Uh, it's a wonderful job and it suits me. I enjoy the creativity of mixing different colors, the beauty of the architecture, the solitude of my work. You say you are a painter, but in fact, you are not. Being a painter is just a mask you wear, you remarked. I felt puzzled as usual and asked, then what am I? You looked off into the distance for some time. Then you turned to me with a kind expression and responded. The fact is, by wearing the mask of a painter, you have made yourself a prisoner. This mask is made up of your own thoughts and feelings which bind you to play this particular role. You are playing the part of a painter just as others play the parts of teacher, carpenter, artist, mechanic and so on. Each of these roles can become a cage depriving you of real freedom. Your vocation is just one of the many prisons you have chosen for yourself. But how could my thoughts and feelings make me a prisoner? I said, looking very confused. I will illustrate my point, you said. Please, I replied eagerly. Think of a silkworm that spins from its own body a cocoon to wrap around itself. It binds itself in an enclosure for protection, in effect, creating a separate existence for itself based on its instinct for survival. Likewise, your mind continually spins 
invisible prison cells and spacious mansions for you to live in. Cells and mansions, I blurted out. With a charming, winsome smile, you responded, yes, but these are not of silk or of stones and mortar, but of something much more subtle, though strong, mental impressions. I felt this was getting too abstract <clears throat> for an ordinary person like myself. And so I impulsively asked, can you make this a little simpler? Okay, go ahead. Yes, I will make it clear. It's <clears throat> one's self-centered attitude that builds prison cells mainly out of lust, greed, and anger. Cells are more binding than mansions and entail physical suffering. The scope of life for these, those imprisoned in cells is very limited. Then why would one build such cells to live in? It is due to one's lust or self-indulgence, which intensifies one's sense of possessiveness and in turn clouds discrimination and vitiates conscience. This tempts people to deceive, dupe, and exploit others for their own selfish interests. They think they are gaining from their behavior, but the truth is that they are only creating grass prison cells to live in. Okay, so basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing again, but the sum and substance of this particular initial beginning of the chapter is that the fact of the matter is in truth i am is the truth which is existence personified anything beyond i am this is an illusion now here the author says i am a painter so the whole idea is that one has prisoned himself as a painter so he cannot look out of the bounds of the cells or mansions of I am the painter. So Baba says that the moment we segregate ourselves and separate ourselves from the all-encompassing ocean, you know, and say that I am a drop, then that is the bondage, that is the prison. Baba gives the example of the silkworm and how it is weaving a cocoon. Why is it weaving a cocoon? Because it wants to emphasize its individuality and its oh, wow. separateness and its separateness from the other. And also there is a sense of self-preservation. So these are all the masks that we wear. I am a painter, I am a writer, I am an author, I am a this, I am an actor, I am a mechanic, I am whatever, whatever that may be. So Baba says these are all prisons which we create out of our own mental consciousness, mental samskaras, and that we get so compressed into that role rather than being just I am. In other words, instead of being absolutely open and absolutely, what should I say, accepting all encompassing oneness and wholeness, we bind ourselves into the prison of I am this or I am that. So that is why when, when in the Arti also we say neti neti, veda pukare. I am not this, I am not that, that way. So basically that is all. I don't think I need to read it except for just two or three. Here Baba, what Baba says is that these prisons are more subtle, though strong. And what are they? They are mental impressions. So, any, so what Baba is trying to come to is, in my understanding, anything that I do with a bent of mind that I am this and therefore I am doing that, that when that I comes along, when that ego comes along, when that karta, as we call it, kartutva viman comes among, uh, along, yes. the doership comes along, I have done this, I am doing this, I am going to do this. The moment that I comes along, you are bound into that prison. We've been doing this over and over again over a long period of time. And that is why the only way out is constant, wholehearted remembrance of the Lord. Constantly 
feeling, believing, and behaving that I am not the doer. It is the Lord, it is Baba who is doing through me. And at the same time, before starting anything, it is Baba who is getting this thing done through me. After ending whatever we have started to do, offer it to Baba and be absolutely detached, unconcerned, unaffected by the results. If we do that on an ongoing basis, not just once or twice or one month or two months, on an ongoing basis, if we have adopted and cultivated that particular attitude towards our living, then perhaps I would feel that gradually we are getting out of the bounds of our prison into the scope of a liberation or mukti or whatever we call that. I think you stopped here, huh? So <laughs> we must control our behavior and use aloud. On the journey to everlasting truth, one passes from bad to good and from good to God, the beyond. But it is not only a question of behavior. I remember this sentence because Adi Kaka, Adi Keirani, Adi Senior, when he had come to our center many, many years back, same thing he said that Baba said that it's such a simple thing that all that you need to do is to go from bad to good to God. And when you have to go from good to God, all you need to do is just remove one O, G-O-O-D, good. You remove one O and you reach God. And Baba smiled and told Adi, it's a Herculean task to remove that O. And it takes lifetimes to remove that O to go from good to God. Because those who are very much indulging, I would use the word indulging, into a good behavior, a noble behavior, a good character, whatever. But still that I is there. I am good. I am being good to others. I am serving others. I am being, you know, part of, you know, whatever concern for others. That I is there. And therefore, the person who is doing good will not even get a thought that actually he is getting more and more bound by the good. You see, so it's very important to understand in order to remove that O from good and go to God, there has to be an agent of action which is other than the separative limit finite I. And the only best that agent could be none other than Baba himself. When we are totally dedicating everything to Baba and totally feeling that I am not the doer, it is he who is doing through me. Go ahead. It is not the last sentence, sir. But it is not only a question of behavior. No, I ask. No, because even your good behavior can imprison you. You see, the mansions are constructed out of the experiences gained through discriminative use of your five senses and also through virtuous feelings. Generally, you are influenced by one sensory perception at a time. As you are a painter, you especially favor the sense of sight. See, we have got five sensory perceptions. We know all that. Sight, sound, touch, taste, etc. So, according to what vocation we are pursuing. pursuing, our focus would be on that. For example, Baba says you are a painter. So obviously your, your sense of sight is more advanced. You know, you are constantly using that. Anything that is perceived through the sense of sight and the agent of action being the limited false eye, it binds. As simple as that. The formula is very simple. So your Baba says, generally... Generally, you are influenced by one sensory perception at a time. time. As you are a painter... You especially favor the sense of sight. Correct. Yes, I agree. The sense perceptions give rise to feelings and the feelings are directed by reason. Each one's life is filled with opportunities to use the five senses with discrimination to express innate noble sentiments. Just as flowers blossom naturally in the right season, so too these selfish sentiments manifest a special talents in some people. These talents that inspire some to become artists, singers, dancers, or poets, and the like. This is the result of a natural flow of life to 
find itself. Oh, I see, I said. You nod, nodded and added, developing such skill in a selfless pursuit of beauty or truth does not create a sense of inner freedom. That is why I call this mental structure that your mind creates a mansion, but this still limits you and means you are not living a boundless life. Again and again, Baba is saying the same thing that even if you are selfless, so we had done this earlier from bad to good to God in the same way from selfishness to selflessness to selfness. Because selfishness and even selflessness is in the domain of duality or illusion or bondage, both. So we need to rise above selfishness and selflessness. So Baba says here that even though you may be using these no, uh, with a with lot of nobility, with a lot of selflessness, you know, all these arts, whatever you are pursuing, that also binds. It, it, sorry? Does, not it does not create enough freedom. freedom. It, does not, oh, it does not create enough freedom. Can you read the last? That is why. Developing such skills in a selfless pursuit of beauty or truth does not create a sense of inner freedom. That is why I call this mental structure that your mind creates a mansion. But this still limits you and means you are not living a boundless life. Correct. Is there any way of leading life that won't imprison me? As long as you identify yourself with any form, you are a captive. The more you are aware that the form is only a mask, the freer you will be. And eventually, when you are totally free from identifying with any form, you will no longer be a prisoner and will have unbounded life in me. My mind as long as the false, can you read that? Very beautiful. As long as you identify yourself with any form, you are a captive. The more you are aware that the form is only a mask, the freer you will be. The moment we understand that this is only a mask, I am a painter, I am a this, I am a that, I am a this, even I am this body is a mask. The, the, the more you become free from the captivity of the form, then the freer you will be. That's what Baba is saying. And eventually, when you are totally free from identifying with any form, you will no longer be a prisoner and will have unbounded life in me. My mind was spiraling in an attempt to fathom the depth in the meaning of your words. A mask can be compared to a bubble containing a drop of water. The drop is imprisoned in the bubble owing to an illusory feeling of separateness. The bubble endows the drop with a sense of individuality and changes according to the various lives lived in cells and mansions. Eventually, with a ray of my grace, the bubble pops and the drop which had an imagined identity through the form of a bubble merges in the ocean that I am. Wonderful, but when will my bubble burst? It is your desires, thoughts and feelings that determine how long you live in the bubble of your mind. Your body is the visible form through which you live in the cells or mansions that you have mentally created. In other words, the body is created through the mental samskaras. We had done this earlier, that the samskaras are the building blocks of the body. If the building blocks like cement and mortar and, and, and whatever bricks and water and all that is not there, then the building will not be constructed and not be constructed. In the same way, if the desires and cravings and samskaras and impressions are not there, the body will not be there. So your Baba says, Baba says beautifully, and we had done this again and again earlier, the mask can be compared to a bubble containing a drop of water. Imagine a drop of water and around the drop of water, there is a bubble. The bubble 
is an illusion, is an ignorance, the bubble of mind, the bubble of finiteness, the bubble of separativeness, it is separate. And this drop and the bubble are all within the ocean. They are not separate from the ocean. They are not outside the ocean. It is all, the whole game is happening within the ambit of the ocean itself. Ocean meaning Paramatma, God, whatever you call it. So Baba says, the drop is imprisoned in the bubble owing to an illusory feeling of separateness. Because of the bubble, the drop feels I am separate from the ocean. The bubble endows the drop with a sense of individuality. I am individual. I am separate from the whole. I am, I am different. And changes according to the various lives lived in cells and mansions. The bubble keeps on changing because the samskaric pattern, the samskaric mold, the impressions, the desires, the cravings, the longings in our mind keeps on changing. And although the bubble keeps on changing, it is captivating the drop. You see, sometimes I'm a man, sometimes I'm a woman, sometimes I'm rich, sometimes I'm poor, and all kinds of illusory experiences. So here Baba says, the bubble endows the drop with the sense of individuality and changes according to the various lives lived in cells and mansions. Eventually, with a ray of my grace, that means without the grace of Baba, nothing happens. No. Even though you may be really doing a very good life, living a very good life, doing whatever meditation, concentration, nam job, whatever, whatever, at the fag end, in order for the bubble to burst, that pin, if at all you call it a pin, Baba calls it a match. That match is in the perfect master's hand. And he will put that matchstick to the whole lot of samskaras and they will just burn away in no time. In the same way, the bubble will burst once the pin is pricked. So here Baba says, eventually with the ray of my grace, the bubble pops, his grace is required. And the drop, which had an imagined identity, it is not a separate identity, reality. It's an imagined identity of separateness, of finiteness and all that. Imagined identity through the form of a bubble merges in the ocean that I am. And when that bubble bursts, the experience of the drop is not, I am a part of the ocean, but I am the ocean. Why? Because the ocean is not only infinite, eternal, but it is also indivisible, that which cannot be separated. And therefore, the experience of that drop would be, at the time of merging, I am the ocean. Agree with this. Yeah, okay. Wonderful. But when will my bubble burst? It is your desires, thoughts, and feelings that determine how long you live in the bubble of your mind. As long as we have desires coming in and coming in, we'll keep on living. It's like Baba had said, explained somewhere else, that your, your alarm clock is wound already. At the given appointed time, it will just unwind and ring. And everything will be over. But if you keep on winding, obviously it will go on eternally. It will just keep on going. So it is the winding of the clock that we need to be careful about. And the winding is through self-centered thoughts, feelings, and actions. I am thinking, I am speaking, I am doing. That Once that stops, the winding stops, and only the unwinding process happens. And one fine day, there is no winding, so the clock will stop. Your body is the visible form through which you live in the cells or mansions that you have mentally created. Will you please clarify this a little more? I request it. You explain, <coughs> when you hear a beautiful song, you become enraptured. At the same time, you're caught up in that rapture as if in a mansion. Unless you use the feeling, the beauty invoke, evokes as a springboard <coughs> to progress onward in your journey to my original sound from where creation came forth. You stopped speaking and I contemplated what you had said for a while, gazing at the beautiful scenery around me. So can I just, sorry, can I just it's very important, okay. very nice. In other words, you have to go from the cre from the create cre creation to the creator. Every aspect of creation, 
every aspect of beauty of creation or every aspect of even ugliness of creation should remind us of the creator mm. because if the creator was not there this particular creation would not have been there but we get bound seduced you may say use that word or entangled entrapped by the creation because creation is there to point to the creator so instead of get instead of going to the creator through the creation we get stopped at creation itself and instead of remembering the creator we fall we fall in love with the creation and that is where all this uh, garbari takes place so here baba says very good thing when you hear a beautiful song you become enraptured at the same time you are caught up in the rapture you are enraptured and that enrapture should have been redirected to the creator oh how beautiful god is how beautiful the creator is how beautiful baba is no at the same time we get caught up in that rapture as if in a mansion unless you use the feeling the beauty evokes the feeling that this beauty evokes not just the music but even seeing a beautiful sunset or a sunrise or mountains or rivers or whatever it is unless you use the feeling the beauty evokes as a springboard to progress onward in your journey to my original sound from where creation came forth that means the source or the originality of all that is beautiful and even all that is ugly the source is baba so all the the as we said earlier you know the creation the entire creation is like a spiritual incubator in which the consciousness of the soul incubates and becomes perfect the entire purpose of the creation is to direct our attention to the creator but the creation is so enchanting is so seducing is so entrapping that we get bound in the creation and forget the creator so here baba says you get caught up unless you use that feeling to and use it as a springboard to go to the creator and understand that the source of that beautiful sound the source of that beautiful color the source of that beautiful sunset and sunrise of the mountains of the trees of whatever of the flowers of the rivers the source is baba if that reminds us of baba then it is helping us to progress we are using the entire creation as a springboard to come to the creator that's what very beautiful uh, thought yeah. go ahead yeah you stopped sorry yeah correct to oh, and uh, you can read the on here yeah. unless you use the feeling the beauty evokes as a springboard to progress onward in your journey to my original <coughs> sound from where creation came forth you stop speaking and i contemplated what you had said for a while gazing at the beautiful scenery around me so even when i am enjoying such blissful moments as these i am still a prisoner i thought to myself waving your arm gracefully towards the sky and the creation around us you responded to my unexpressed thought this expansive beauty inspires apparent freedom but it is still a relative freedom becoming absorbed in such beauty can enliven your movements and usher you into new dimensions of joy but it represents only a shift from a small mansion to a bigger one it may however offer direction for the real search which should be towards everlasting beauty and freedom so in other words when you are enjoying the beauty you know and yes we are baba then you are just going from there is no i my me and mine we had done that earlier in the earlier chapter where baba so beautifully demarcates between pleasure happiness joy and bliss you we remember that so here baba says you will just be graduating in a sense from a smaller mansion to the higher mansion but all but that is only just a small shift you will definitely be shifting to a higher mansion but that also is a prison 
And in order for you to gain freedom, then you must direct all your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions towards the creator who has created the creation and not be bound by creation. Being a painter, the idea of capturing everlasting beauty on canvas appealed to me very much. And with this in mind, I said, I guess if I had to choose one, I'd choose to live in a mansion constructed with my love of color. Smiling, you responded, each one has an inherent ability to build beautiful grand mansions of one's choice that give a greater sense of liberty and even a feeling of my presence. But you will have to go beyond all this also. How can this be? I asked. This relative freedom will eventually be transcended owing to the natural flow of wisdom inherent in body and mind. All physical joys and sorrows, as well as all mental delights and agonies, expedite one's inner journey, inward journey to me. Again, this is another very beautiful thought where Baba says that you're going from a smaller mansion to a higher mansion because you're becoming less and less self-centered. But that is not all. Still, that selfishness is there. In order to have complete freedom, there should be no sense of self. And here, a very beautiful sentence here says, this relative freedom will eventually be transcended. That means at one point in time in your life, finally, each and every one will become free when you will transcend even this particular relative freedom or bigger freedom. And we had done this earlier so many times, you know, that there is no creature that is not destined for the supreme goal as there is no river that is not winding its way to the sea. We had also done that each and everything in creation will finally reach the goal, whether you like it or not, want it or not. The whole idea which is on the drawing board of creation is that each and every creature will finally experience, I am the creator. So here Baba is using the word, this relative freedom will eventually be transcended owing to the natural flow of wisdom. That is the line I was drawing it. There is a natural flow of wisdom, which means there is a built-in spark of divinity. I, we had done this earlier, if you remember. That, that howsoever, no, that is different. Howsoever high you may go up in the sky, howsoever. And if you drop water, it will finally find its way to the ocean because the drop of water is a part of the oceanic water. It will come down only. In the same way, howsoever deep down into the earth you go, you go down into the soil <clears throat> and light a matchstick, a spark of fire, it would want to go up only because that fire is a representative symbolic fire, spark of that fire, which we call sun. So it is going up, water is coming down in the same way. There is an inbuilt chip, the chip, we call it the chip, you know, there is a built-in chip in each one of us which is, the, which is the divinity, chip of divinity. So whether we want it, that is, that is the meaning of the inborn wisdom is such that finally that chip will not be satisfied unless and until this chip merges with the ocean. So that is the whole uh, modus operandi or methodology of creation. So here Baba says, owing to the natural flow of wisdom, I would like to interpret it in that way owing to the natural flow of wisdom, inherent, it is inherent, it is innate, it is built in, it is, it is the given, as we say, what is it called? It is a platform, it is, a, I forgot the name, anyway, it is already built in, you know, it is the given thing in the body and the mind, so there is no other way but to finally reach the goal. All physical joys and sorrows, as well as all mental delights and agonies, expedite one's inward journey to me. That means each and every experience in our life is a result which will expedite our journey to Baba. In other words, what I'm trying to say is uh, it will catapult us, it will pull us 
towards the source. This is, I'm adding a little bit. If we are able to analyze what we are going through as a result of our own karma, as an opportunity of growth, as a springboard to move from one level to the other, it will definitely, if we are conscious about it, if we are aware, if our awareness is very sharp about it, we will constantly be moving towards the goal. On the contrary, if we weep and wail and cry and why me, poor me, you know, blaming somebody else for whatever we are going to, then we might go into the same circle because we need to learn the lessons of our suffering. So your Baba says each and every, each and every experience of our life is taking us towards the goal. I was listening to you intently and the words touched my heart and lifted me out of my small self for a time. After a few moments, I meekly asked, when you state that all forms are prisons, what about your form that I see? Pleased at my forthright <coughs> question, you answered, the longing and love of each individual heart binds me in the physical form that one sees. <coughs> but even this is only a passing appearance. It is like snow formed on the vast waters of the ocean that I am. I am beyond any form. In other words, having no need to come, he has come. He has no need to take a form. He has taken a form for our sake. But the difference between his form and our form is that our form binds, whereas his form is non-binding. He is also beyond the form and his form is there to free us from our form. So that is the reason why voluntarily he becomes a captive in a form to release us from the captivity of our form. Please, sorry. I, I'm afraid this too, that this is too mystical for me. I complained. All right, I will use another metaphor. You offered with a smile. Once a little child saw a full moon in the sky and began to plead to its mother to have the moon as a toy. And what did she do? I asked. She brought the child a big basin of water. <clears throat> Soon the ripples of water settled and the full moon was reflected in it. <clears throat> the child was overjoyed. Dancing around the basin, the child cried out jubilantly. Now I have the moon. But did the child really get the moon? You asked. Pausing a moment, you added. Similarly, out of my compassion, I get myself bound in a particular suitable form that is only a reflected appearance in the water of your longing for reality. As the moon is reflected on the surface of water, I am reflected and seemingly imprisoned in this form for the time being. Indeed. So beautifully, I remember once uh, a similar explaining more or less the yeah, similar yes. thing about, uh, okay, please, please. In sorry. reality, I am formless. I imprison myself in specific forms for a while in order to free you from all prisons. Correct, that we did. I remember once um, uh, Baba was speaking with uh, Krishna, you know, we know mm. Krishna Nair, oh, yes. and Baba explained the similar thing, you know, that what do you see on the wall? On the wall, there was Baba's shadow, Baba's image. And then Baba said words to the effect that what you see me standing before you is not the real me. The real me is beyond. What you are seeing and what you are interacting with is only a shadow of my real me. So same thing Baba is saying here, that just as a moon was just brought down to appease the child's whatever, you know, curiosity and what in the same way my reflection is here into this world and is, is reflected into your consciousness as a reality but in reality this is only a reflection that's what baba wanted to convey it was not easy for me to fully assimilate what you were lovingly explaining and sharing though somewhat perplexed i emboldened myself to ask what should i do to become free from these cells and mansions with a very compassionate expression that revealed your intimacy with me, you disclose, don't worry, you will eventually gain your freedom. In playing the part of being an earnest, 
creative painter, you have to try your best, all the while loosening your grip on the brush of individuality. So beautifully. Loosening the grip on the brush of individuality. In other words, whatever you do, loosen your grip on I am the doer. See, how beautifully worded, you know. I am not the doer, it is Baba who is doing for me. Excellent. And if you can paint your thoughts with my remembrance and color your feelings with warm-hearted love for me, then you will gradually realize that I am, in fact, the real painter in you. In this process, you will be the natural recipient of my guidance. This will make you more and more aware of my continual help to unmask your true self. You winked at me and added, and also you will become aware of my countless excuses for secretly assisting you to paint with the right colors. So your very beautiful paragraph where Baba says that the more you remember me in whatever you are doing, the less you will remember that you are doing, and more you will get to experience that I am the real painter in you. That's what Baba is trying. Spontaneously, I asked, so which color would you suggest <laughs> I concentrate on? As you pointed your finger upwards, I watched a beam of light come out of your finger and go higher and higher. Then the beam of light turned into a majestic and marvelous canopy of seven colors. Fascinated, I gazed at it and suddenly the seven colors spread out into a soft, pleasing white. I could not understand what was happening. In astonishment, I turned my head to look at you and found you had gone. <laughs> the memory of the canopy of colors you showed me continues to paint my heart with your presence and dye my mind with your remembrance. This is a reward of lifetimes from you, leading me to the fringe of timelessness, where I will be released from the prisons of both cells and mansions to ever abide in your boundless love. How beautiful <laughs> Baba's escaping, you know. Last time we did that, he, uh, the author Bal Natuji was so tempted to offer a flower and he goes and picks the flower and turns around and Baba is gone. And here what he's doing is Baba is pointing a finger up and different colors use coming up, you know, and, and, and Bal Natuju is appreciating, is appreciating the colors which finally get into a white. And by the time he sees what is happening, it's gone. So that's it. Coming back to the reading. So the, the sum and substance of this particular chapter is that we are all prisoners of our own <laughs> thought processes, of our own samskaras, there is nothing we can do about it because it's, it's been going on for eons. Now that we have the greatest good fortune of having Baba in our life and also the greatest good fortune of knowing how we can escape from the prison, Baba is giving us some cue, some chavi, as we say, you know, there's a, there's a song in Hindi, you know, bin, bin taale ki chavi leke ghumte mare mare, it's Kishore Kumar and Ashok Kumar or something. So we have been given the key. Now we have to use that key properly in the lock so that we escape from the freedom of our own making. And what is that key? The key is constant wholehearted remembrance. The key is I am not the doer that he is doing through us, whatever that we may be doing. I, I assume that that is a most, what should I say, absolutely effective key and if we practice, many times we forget, but if we practice, then we, your, your Baba is summarizing that the moment you think, you, you have to imagine that the, the grip of your individuality, or because it's a painter, it, it applies to each one of us in whatever way, whatever profession that we are in, that the grip should be loosened so that he can enter into our being and a time will come when we will actually, actually experience that I am not the doer, it is he who is doing everything to us. So there is no anxiety, there is no stress, there is no worry, there is no what is uh, going to happen tomorrow. You are, because there is no I, 
it's all him doing the whole process and one fine day by his grace and by our little effort of remembering him when we breathe our last we will finally reach him so here ends the chapter we still have a few minutes so i am taking that opportunity acha anyway anybody has any questions anything to ask anything to share no all right so we still have we still have 10 minutes more to go so what i'll do is because meher daruwala had asked about she i suppose she may not have read the uh, the program for baba's birthday so i'm just going to read it out so that it goes on record somebody who's listening to this before the 25th will know this now this is the morning program the program mode is virtual the zoom id has been given i'll just repeat it so that if people have not received they can listen to this and punch in the zoom id is 89005078722 and the password is love that's the constant id and a password for our meher baba bombay center and then or you can go directly to the youtube channel which is avatar meher baba bombay center at 4:30 sharp in the morning we all know that baba's time a birth time is at 5 o'clock at some time baba system mani had corrected it and said that it is 5:15 but we are going by the you know consensus of 5 o'clock in the morning so at 4:30 am there'll be devotional songs at 4:55 am in the morning there'll be silence complete silence at 5 am there will be repetition of god's name five names of god repeated seven times each by different people at the at the bombay center of course the bombay center is closed at that time the bombay center will open at 10 and it will close at 7 in the evening that's the diff- so then at 5:15 there will be the happy birthday song then from 5:20 onwards there would be all the entertaining entertainment program in between there will be a short welcome by our president hoshang dada chanji and i will also be speaking a little while and also giving some instructions or whatever announcements that i have to make that will be done immediately after the uh, the happy birthday song all right then there are this presentation of songs dance instrumental music short skits poetry etc and we were expected to send the videos etc to victory unto thee at gmail.com but the date has already gone the last date originally was 15 february it was extended up to 20th february and it's over with and for further details one can ask uh, mayor veena the numbers are there but i i don't want to give the numbers right now okay but right, why not why not mayor veena she is the admin for the program her number is 9819908386 then there's another one janice her number is 9320401421 and the third one is sajil his number is 9167198806 so that is the morning program which should be over by about 6:30 quarter to 7 7 with the rt and then we have the evening program on the same day 25th friday evening program and the evening program uh again we are having a zoom platform same id same password youtube channel it will be there on youtube channel as well and the welcome address and prayers would be there and then i would be speaking for about uh, one and a quarter hours or maybe one hour one and a quarter hours about the importance the city of bombay has played in the life and times of avatar meher baba in this avataric ministry what was the importance of the city of bombay on the 25th oh i'm sorry see thank thank goodness somia is correcting me i appreciate your okay i'm sorry this particular this particular talk is on the 27th which is a sunday i'm sorry 25th baba's birthday i am talking about the genesis of the center how the center came about how it was started in small homes and that it evolved and finally how baba gave us the permission what was the message that baba sent how it was inaugurated and it will stop on that day of inauguration which is baba's birthday 25th february 1962 so thank you very much 
So that is the talk for the 25th evening. Two days after that, which is 27th, there'll be another talk, which will be the importance of Baba's, uh, uh, importance of the city of Bombay in the ministry, in Baba's ministry. That is there. And then on the 4th of March, which is also Sunday, I will be speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing the talk, I will be speaking more on Manzil -e Meme, which was Baba's first ashram. And that was also in Bombay. And I'll be speaking about certain aspects of Manzil -e Meme that will be on the 4th of March, which is also a Sunday. And thereafter, there'll be a play uh, connected with Bombay. So this time, the whole emphasis is on the importance of the city of Bombay in the Autaric ministry of Autar Meher Baba. So I, so I'm sure you would have all got the invitation. Uh, if Rakesh, if you contact Rakesh Acharya, he would be able to send it. Anything else anybody wants to say? We still have five minutes to go. Okay, Samia, why, why don't you say something? Yes, please go ahead. I just have a question, but there's another program which is at 10 o'clock, right, on 25th? No. You're talking, I thought a lot of people are talking, you, Jimmy Modi and... No, 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 no. That is not, no, 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 no. There's no program at 10 o'clock on the 25th? No. Yeah. No, no, no. no. There's no program. No, sir. No, sir. At From 10 to 7, the center will be open. People can go for darshan. It's better that you ask appointment of Daraya Subedar. But if you, if you, uh, sorry. It's better if you ask the uh, permission, I mean, the, the appointment, and only about 10 people would be allowed at a time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes at a time, no touching the frame, no embracing and all that. Prasad would be given from the center, and that's for the 25th Baba's birthday, which is a Friday. But there's no program at 10 o'clock, no. I don't know. Okay. Sorry? Uh, I'm reading All Things Meher Baba Conversations for Change. Okay. 25th February at 10 a.m. IST. Facebook page, Instagram handle, they gave a lot of things. Speakers, Mr. and Mrs. Cyrus Kambata, Mr. Marinosh Mehta, Mr. Jimmy Modi. So I, then, it is such a surprise that I am myself not aware of it. But if you say so, then I'll have to contact uh, who's that? Uh, no, 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 no. So there is also Roshni Shenas talking, Angela Lee Chen, oh, oh. Siddharth Verma. When? No. It's no. a host is Mr. Meher Akshay. Ah, Meher Akshay. Bundelu. Bundelu, huh? No, I have, I have not received any no. such. Or maybe I have not checked up my, because I haven't checked my WhatsApp anyway. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much for telling. I will look into it, but I was personally... I'm I'm surprised. It's a it's a it's a surprise for me. I was not aware of it. But thanks for informing. Okay. See, that's why Ram is there. You know. <laughs> anyway, let's see if if it is there, we'll 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 see if we can participate in that. I'm surprised he must have he has not called me up because in my in my so-called WhatsApp status I have mentioned no chat. Please call because sometimes I don't see it for days together. So. Anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you, okay. Baba. I think and Jimmy or Jimmy Modi also said the same thing that he was not contacted. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Yeah. Anyway, we just have two more minutes to go. Let's end with the moon. So uh, uh, we'll, sir, yeah, Sarajji, yeah, one minute. Sir, Ram has something to share. Yes, no, sir. no, it's Go Meher. On. It's Meher Chan Nori. No, no. Ah, oh, is it Meher Chan Nori? Okay, okay. Yeah. I Sir, want to you... just say even Ram knows. No, no, it's a very special day for us. Yes, yes, yes. Baba go visited our house at my uncle's house at Machli Patam on 22nd February 1954. I did say that, Merjan, in the morning, yeah, uh, in, okay, in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, please go ahead. Time. Please go ahead. No, that's what I want because Ram might have forgotten about this. No, no, I no. no I said it. Him. But I saw your photograph on the screen. Yeah. So where were you? Were you sleeping? I or? just, uh, no, no, no. I was just <laughs> reading the. I was listening and also reading tomorrow's case. Nay, nay, nay. I, and I, okay, I yeah. said that. I said that. Amen, yes. Baba. Sam has something to share. Sam Patel, please go ahead. Sammy. Sir, so some, uh, this thing uh, in your announcement uh, on the 25th Baba's birthday, the Zoom meeting is on in the, in the morning. 
Yes. But in the evening, there is no Zoom meeting at all. It's only on YouTube. Only on YouTube. That is yes. what yes. needs to be clarified, Cyrus. Yes. That's Thank all. you, Sammy. Thank you. I no. hope the OC sends out the notice again. The organizing committee should be doing that. I have told them to do it. Thanks, Sammy. All right, then I think we've almost... Now, we still have a minute. Why don't we just say a short, a short do? Meher Baba. 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 Autar Meher Baba ki jai. Jai Baba Jai and Baba. thank you, beloved Baba. Baba. Thanks to all of you. Thank you, Baba. And happy Baba birthday in advance Jai. to all of us. Happy Baba. Jai 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 Baba.